It's the Locked On Flyers podcast for Monday, March 4th, your daily dose of Flyers news, analysis, and high quality content that just wants to shake Tyson Forrester's hand. Man, what a game. Yeah, he was really excited. I was happy for him. Your Locked On Flyers, your daily podcast on the Philadelphia Flyers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey there, and thanks for making Locked On Flyers your first listen every day. I am Rachel Donner. You can find me on Twitter at rmiriam. I'm here, as always, with Russ Cohen, who's on all your favorite social media apps at Sportsology. We are at Locked On Flyers on Instagram, Threads, Blue Sky, and Twitter as well. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150 if your bet wins. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On to get started. You can find us over on YouTube or on the SiriusXM app or anywhere you listen to podcasts. Subscribe to get our latest episode as soon as it's available here on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Russ, we will get into that split decision back to back this weekend there, with a lot of implications. Uh, there was definitely you know, some buzz around the Flyers with some news this mm-hmm. weekend as well. Um, We are recording on Sunday morning, and we have not heard confirmation from the Flyers as of yet, but we did hear uh, via the hockey news that Denver Barkey should be signing his ELC today. Yeah, I mean the hockey news, but really the London Knights put out a tweet and then they retired. So (laughs) um, either or, whichever you prefer. (laughs) Uh, Yeah, it's a good signing. I mean, again, he's having a great year fully expected it to happen so yeah just a nice thing um but you know like i you know people were asking me so you know what do i think he needs to do uh he still needs to get stronger i still needs to get faster like this is not going to be an easy transition as he moves up the ladder yeah i think so and uh, i think that having the elc kind of behind him will give him i think more support from the flyers which in more direction which i think is important um yeah he's third in the ohl in points this Mm -hmm. season thus far with 87 pretty remarkable year i think outperforming expectations um i think he and bonk are having real strong years there in london but london is also a very good team so there's a lot of good people around them as well and so i think that like it'll be really good to see Barky like become a leader as he progresses in his career. Yeah. And I think that would happen. And, and I think um, that's something to look forward to, you know, the bonk thing's interesting, but he's not going to play the, uh, the bumper when he, when he gets to the NHL. So no, just watch his defense folks. That's, that's what matters. Yeah. Yeah. I think so. Uh, Also, a little potential Sean Walker extension talk out there in the wild and, you know, reports anywhere in the three to five year range for a contract. And uh, it's really the term for me that's more interesting, which is why I mention it over the money, which, you know, four million, whatever. uh, He's worth what he's worth. But I think the term and where the Flyers are going with the rebuild is more important. Right. Right. I I think. I think we're starting to learn more things about what the quote unquote rebuild is. I'm going to start calling it that. And with Walker, uh, probably going to be four years, could be five and probably going to be around 4 million bucks could be a little over. Those are both a little too rich for me. I think there, there is a formula that says, yes, Walker could stay, but none of those terms, you know, the thing is sometimes you do, uh, need to get the best deal you can for a player. And again, I'll go back to, and we may never get the answer when those original trade talks were coming out for Walker, what were they being offered? Like that's, you know, it it may come down to that. So right now I'm guessing, but I'm guessing the offers haven't been as good as since then, since those early moves. Cause you saw those, the few teams that really moved early um, gave some really good offers. Now the offers are starting to wane. And so I think yep. that's what's happened with Walker. And 
you know, so then they're looking at it like, okay, I guess we'll keep them now because the offers weren't good. But now you have to, you know, be mindful of just what you did with Ristolainen. in You have to be, it's the same thing. The, the, the ages are close. Everything's close. You might say, hey, that'll never happen again, but it could. Yeah, and, and speaking of that, you know, there's still conversation around potentially trading him, but there would be salary retention, and I just don't see the Flyers being able to swing one of these sweet three or or three team deals that are have been out there right to get seventy five percent of the salary dealt with, right. you know, elsewhere or whatever. So I just think that it, it just doesn't the bigger thing. make sense. Even if they found that thing, that three way thing to happen it's going to cost them a draft pick. Yeah. And so like, if you are truly rebuilding, why are you doing that? And again, not, why are you retaining? Not unless you're trading second... two other guys away, right. Yeah, and getting yeah. them back. Right. And why are you, you know, retaining another slot, which is what would happen too. And then they'd be, that would be it. They'd be full for salary retention. So these are all big questions. Yeah. Especially with that Cal Peterson contract looming yes. out there too. Yeah. So I, I think that this is an off-season decision. Absolutely. Yeah, seems that way. Uh, the other big thing that happened, kind of getting into our game conversation, is that Felix Sandstrom got the call-up. We talked about it last week, um, and we assumed that he would play against the Ottawa Senators. He did. Um, I think he did pretty decently. He had some help from the posts, <laughs> both of them. Yeah, uh, oh, for yeah. sure. Yeah. Uh, but uh, but I do th I think there were two things happening. I think number one, he stepped up, which is really good. I think his positioning overall was pretty solid. Um, but secondarily, the team absolutely played harder in front of him. 100%. Yeah. There's two things about that. So the first one is there's no question Sandstrom is more flexible and better that way than than Peterson, right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, I get to see these guys in the locker room. Sandstrom has put on a lot of muscle since oh, yeah. two years ago. He's oh, yeah. quite built now. Like, I, I was shocked at that. Well, and when they posted that dog photo, yeah. I was just like, oh, my God. <laughs> like, yeah. He has definitely he's really been working on himself. That's one yeah. thing. The other yeah. thing that you can't overlook is he's really good friends with Sam Urson. Now, that's not to say Peterson is not friendly with these guys, but these guys know each other. And they've been knowing each other for years. And there's a lot more continuity with that than you would have with Peterson. And that's that's important. Yeah, I, I do think that's a factor as well. But I do think, you know, when you look at the defensive effort that the Flyers put out against the Senators, especially, you know, uh, Nick Sealer blocking 87 shots or whatever it was. Yeah, Mark Stahl, Mark Stahl aside, because I didn't see anything good out of Mark Stahl in that game. Maybe one or two passes. There was one that, rush. Uh, there was one yeah, rush. One rush, yes. <laughs> one rush that he got pushed to the corner. I remember that yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. And, and that kept Ronnie Adderd stapled to the bench, which still to me makes no sense. Yeah, I think, you, you know, know the that, press that's box, the other. Thing, not the bench. Right. And that's another thing about these two games that was really interesting. And there's a whole conversation to be had about how Tortorella handled the younger players. So number yeah. one, we had that benching in the Caps game, right? Where Bobby Brink admittedly made a pretty bad yeah. mistake, right? Um, I mean, but, Sean Couturier blew the face off though. Like, yeah, that's the thing. It was mean? like, it was, it was a team effort there, but Brink made a very obvious mistake. Yeah. Um, as well, but to then get benched for the remainder of the game, Lixel was benched for the remainder well, of the game. Before getting benched, getting screamed at, which I yeah. think was over the top. It was over yeah. the top. Yeah, 100%. And, and I think that benching, so he benched them on yeah. Friday. Then on Saturday, um, Brink gets in the lineup, but uh, Lixel gets scratched. And Ronnie Adder plays in either game. Right, right. That part I didn't like. The other part that you're saying, Delorier, like he didn't have a fight, so I'm not sure why he was in there. You could have had Lixell in there. Now, the brink part's interesting. The brink part, because people right. were saying, well, Russ, what would you have done differently the other game? What I would have done differently is I would have just said, you know, get off the ice, and I wouldn't have used them for three or four shifts. But I still would have put him in that game against the Capitals because they needed the offense. And he was they creating did. offense. 
And so you took that out. And then as far as, you know, this game goes, the next one, I still would have had Lixell in there too because they still needed the offense. This game was still very close. They're not like, you know, they, they're missing some guys, and this is how you could help that. But again, there's a stubbornness and a thing, you know, that with the coach that, hey, things have to be my way or, or no way. So it's like, okay. And, and Brink had a decent game, but I did feel like he was tentative five on five. On the power play, yeah. you saw the real Bobby Brink. But otherwise, and I think this is part of the, you know, it's hard to develop that way when you have to worry about that. Right. And I I think there's just a little bit of inconsistency from Torts in terms of, you know, what constitutes an unforgivable mistake versus right. something that you're going to learn from and move on and play your next shift and do better next time. I think with with those two guys, there's some inconsistency there from the coach. And I think that to again, to not give Adder an opportunity at all, like what was he doing there? Honestly. Right. Right. You know, the Phantoms, and, and, yeah, Phantoms the lost, thing, lost two games. So, okay. Right. <laughs> you know? And, and we'll get more into it down the line here, but with Forster, there was never going to be a defensive issue. He was good. He's always good two-way player. This is different with these guys. They're not the same kind of two-way players. They're more offensive. So there's only so – it's they can only get so good at that. Right. So we're going to talk more about this and – I get into some other aspects of the two games this weekend coming up next. Get all the buckets with your first bet on FanDuel, America's number one sports book, because right now new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any five winning $5 bet. That's 150 bucks. If your bet wins bet on all your favorite NBA players and teams like the 76ers with quick bets, live same game parlays, exclusive props, and more. Plus, you can get in on all the NHL betting action. Just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and shoot your shot. FanDuel, official sportsbook partner of the NBA. On tomorrow's show, we will be recapping uh, tonight's game against the St. Louis Blues. Uh, plus, we will have Phantoms Tuesday getting into uh, more about their action and uh, the top prospects there this past weekend. So continuing that discussion, I think, yeah, there was a lot of conversation about Tyson Forrester, and I, I think it's all well-deserved in terms of how he's kind of put things together where he's always had like a solid two-way game to your point. Um, and Tortorella has praised him throughout this season on his play away from the puck here. And now he's on a run. Like the goals are finally coming. He's got nine goals and an assist in his last 10 games. Um, you know, two goals against Ottawa. Um, thought he made a really great move in the shot that earned him the penalty shot. Right. I thought that that was a really strong play from him and he was able to maintain control enough that it drew that penalty shot. Right. Yeah. And and I really liked what he did there. Yeah, no question. It was a great penalty shot. It was uh, a terrific move. Uh, you know, he was feeling it at that part in the game. That was good. The only thing I feel bad about is he's not really able to express. And I think this is just because of the way the team is and the way John is at times how he didn't have that confidence early in the year. And now he really does. He really is sort of sidestepping that when people are asking him about it. And, and it's a shame because I don't think there's any shame in saying, no, this is, this is, there's been a lot of growth here in the last few weeks, but we could see it. So it's fine. Yeah. I did notice that, that uh, in the post game, when he was yeah. asked specifically about that, he's like, I don't know, man, they're just going in. My head was yeah. down. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, he's trying real hard, but I, I think that yes. it, it is good that it's, it's all coming together. And, but you can see the difference there, right? Because now granted, John Tortorella is correct. Tyson Forster's play away from the puck has been generally really good. So it's not yeah. a lie, but you can see when the encouragement is there, how it is fruitful. And when right. you, you get correct. jerked around a little bit coming in and out of the lineup, getting yelled at, there's an effect there, right? Yeah, there's definitely a cause and effect. I mean, you see it in players and um, 
I'm just going to say it this way. I know a lot of us grew up with like that negative sort of, you know, benching sort of, this is always the way in hockey and this was what works. But, you know, I've learned over the years, more positive enforcement works over negative enforcement. At least that's my experience in sports and in life. Yeah, I think so too. I think that, you know, it is apples and pears. Absolutely. Because I think Tyson Forrester has exhibited better play generally yeah. um, than, than maybe Brink um, has or Lixell in his, you know, few opportunities. But I think that there's some, you know, more chances to learn and to get back out there and get back on the horse right away that are yeah. being missed. Um, but I'm just glad that Brink had, um, I would say, a solid game against Ottawa, not a great game. Right. I mean, he wasn't the benefit or the beneficiary of any positive reinforcement. But on the power play, he looked good. He was one of the only that looked good on the power play. That power play against Ottawa was maybe the worst we've seen it all year for certain, for a couple of them. Just absolutely just discombobulated. And... You know, I've said that, you know, while they're on this quest for the playoffs, like in, if they'd have lost that game, right? If they'd have lost that game against Ottawa, you could have looked straight at the power play. And down yeah. the stretch, it, it it's just mind-boggling that it's still going to be this bad. Right. And uh, to be fair, nobody scored a power play goal in that game you no. know, from either but team. Ottawa was not a great team, right? I mean, we know this. Uh, right, right. No, I, and I think that's, you know, brings us to another point, actually, where... Um, we had talked last week about maybe the penalty kill getting a little more conservative because they don't have yeah. Travis connecting out there. And they did that and it they was successful. That. Yeah, they did that. They definitely were throwing the pucks in the corners more. Even Lawton wasn't going um, crazy to try and get uh, short shorthanded goals. I think that was smart. I mean, when you see guys like Stutzel, the way he could skate around the ice, especially mm -hmm. when it was four on four, you don't want to chance that. No. So I thought they were very smart and handled that very well, actually. Um, but man, do I miss Travis Konechny because of that power kill opportunity oh, sure, yeah. that maybe changes things. We miss the scoring. We miss the tenacity. I think some of the nonsense that happened in the Caps game wouldn't have happened if Travis Konechny was And there. I think it still would have happened. I think, I look. But it would have been different. Halfway's because responsible for some of that, too, though. We have to. Well, and he was goading. I know. Too. I listen. Did I not mention that on the Friday show that Hathaway yeah, yeah, could yeah. get into something? Oh, yeah. So, um, yeah. So I thought that was funny, but him fighting Tom Wilson is. And I think him and Wilson were having fun with it. I don't think there was any animosity there. None. No. no, it's just weird when ex teammates fight like that. But yeah, I I just think that you know that Caps game in particular really missed Travis Konechny. I think that the whole energy of that game would have been different. Yeah. The other thing is sort of like an elephant in the room uh, because he was put on the fourth line, but are we going to see any improvement in Sean Couturier's play? Cause it has dropped tremendously. Yeah. I think that is an, a big elephant in the room. And I know, you know, they tried to drop him to the fourth line to give him sheltered minutes um, and put him in, in key situations and rotate him in. And then, you know, in that caps game where, towards short in the bench and and you know basically had three lines going for the third period a they were already worn out from that game so it wasn't yeah. helpful and b it put Sean Couturier in an awkward position of having to play more yep and and that's the thing I mean again they're still they have to manage this with days off you can't manage it with fewer minutes in game you just can't do it. He's going to need an occasional day off, especially down the stretch. And I don't know why they can't come to that realization. Yeah, it, it, it's a, a really difficult challenge for them now, given the injury situation. Right. I think they're just kind of stuck. And, and Okay, maybe this they... moment for the next until TK, mm -hmm. sure. But this has been going on for a while. Yeah, but I think that they did something to mitigate it. It's just unfortunate that there's other injuries that are now – necessitating right. him playing more than they want or in different situations than they want. So I don't really necessarily blame them for it because like, who else are they going to put out there? Let's be real. Yeah. I mean, there are some other things they can do. Would it be ideal? No, but like 
if you were going to do it, you could have done it against Ottawa as an example. Like that was the team you could have tried, you know, to rest him. You, you, there were guys on the bench that we talked about that you could have put in. Probably still could have won the game that way. Maybe they've even been a little closer, but whatever. Um, sometimes that's a good thing to do. The other thing that was sort of buried in this game, there was a pregame quote from Claude Giroux, you know, saying that he had never uh, lost going into Philly, which is true, even with Florida, and he did lose. And actually, it's the first game he didn't have a point either. But he was pretty brash on his pregame. I think it was on Sportsnet, on his pregame interview for Sportsnet. Um, did he not get I thought he had a secondary assist on one of the goals. Oh, did he? I didn't yeah, think he did. He did. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So he did keep yeah. that part going, but the win part, no. Yeah. But oh, and then when he and Lawton got into it, I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was funny. Yeah, that was funny. Um, yeah, yeah. All right. Well, um, on to the next one, as they say, uh, which is the St. Louis Blues that the Flyers face tonight. We're going to do that and name our nemesis of the week coming up next. Buying tickets to your favorite events should not be stressful. Game time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all the sports, music, comedy, and theater near you. They've got killer deals on last minute tickets and with their best price guarantee, you can stop stressing over your tickets and start getting excited for all the fun you'll have. My favorite parts of the game time app is that it's great for getting notified about those flash deals. Plus you can get the all important view from your seat. Game time has tickets right up to the start of the event and even up to an hour after it starts. So it's the place to find your last minute seats. Also, they're sent directly to your phone so you never have to dig through emails. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with GameTime. Download the GameTime app, create an account, and use the code Locked On for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account, redeem with the code Locked On for $20 off. Download GameTime today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league like Locked On NHL. Go to Locked On Sports Today on YouTube and subscribe. So the St. Louis Blues, uh, we saw them pretty recently, mid-January, where the Flyers won 4-2. Right now, the Blues are fifth in the Central and five points out of a wild card spot. So it seems like um, they're going to keep trying, but I just don't think things are going to pan out for this team, right? It, it may not, but but they're going to still play a very desperate game. Yeah. And, yeah. and they, you know, they have guys that play big and heavy, and sometimes the Flyers still have trouble with that um, as a whole, as a team. And so in this game... Um, Either goalie's good. Obviously, Bennington's better. So if they face Bennington, that's one thing. And they have a big blue line. Pareko can really uh, really cause some issues out there. But also, look, Thomas has gotten hot. He's turning into a real star in the league. So yep. Braden Shen, you know, he always seems to do well coming in. So there's there's enough players there. Buchnevich, who, you know, is still going to be there until he gets traded or he doesn't. So there's there's incentive for these guys to still play hard. And that's so that's that's not going to be a, you know, an easy game. No, not at all. And I think that, you know, this game is obviously important. Every point is important now um, as we're getting in the waning days of the season here. Uh, but it, it is really interesting because if you look at the Flyers record over the last stretch, um, they're having trouble against the Metro division rivals, right? Yes. They they just can't seem to get wins. And that most of their points are coming against teams from outside the division True. at the moment, as we saw them, you know, lose to the caps, but win against the Sens, right? And that, that third playoff spot in the Metro, as we've said, is really the Flyers only shot to make the playoffs because right. it seems like the wild card spots are going to go to the Atlantic division. It Things does. could change. Don't get me wrong, but it seems like it, it does seem that way. I agree with you on that. Yeah. For, for now. So I think that, you know, this kind of goes a little bit into my nemesis of the week where the Flyers absolutely need to step it up against 
uh, the Metro teams, and it's it's going to become more and more important. However, this week, Flyers are facing the Blues, the Panthers, and the Bolts, so no Metro teams on the schedule this week. And so there's, you know, last week we talked about wild card land, and I was just saying, you know, we don't want to be in wild card land because it's not going to help the Flyers, right? Yeah. With with the way the standings are, so this week, you know, there's no four point games this week. It's all two point games really that are happening, except for maybe this game against the Bolts because they're in this nebulous wild card land as well, uh, to some degree. So. Yeah, Blues, Panthers, Bolts. So they got to get all six points this week, I believe, in order to stay in that spot in the division because of these other games that are four-point games going on in the division. Yeah. My nemesis of the week is going to be, while it was a lot of fun having Marvel Superhero Day, there's still no villains. They're, they're, they didn't have one villain. It's like Marvel has great villains. Why can't they have an equal amount of villains and heroes? I don't understand. It's, you know, if you had Thanos there, you don't you don't think that people would react to that? Of course they would. I actually made the joke that the Flyers power play could use a few of the uh, um, Infinity uh, Stones. But at any <laughs> rate, <laughs> I was trying. But that's my whole thing. Villains, there's villains in this world. There's villains in the Marvel Universe and the MCU embrace them have a few they didn't they could have invited some of the other nhl mascots into town to be the yeah, villains that would have been awesome <laughs> that right that's a great idea have the jersey <laughs> devil come in dressed as you know whatever maybe he would be fat. loki loki yeah loki that would make sense actually that yeah. would have been good but i will give gritty credit he did do a, a flip and on the on the trampoline that's not easy to do in that costume so i give him credit for yeah that. Yeah, that is Excellent. that is pretty cool. Yeah. Um yeah, and I was like of all the mascots to put on a Spider-Man costume, Gritty is probably not the best one in terms no. of aesthetic, but he does it have the great. athleticism. Yeah, he has, but the he has athleticism. The athleticism to back it up. So, I will yeah. s- certainly give him that. Um But I yeah, said he was I, like I, the I, Andrew Garfield of of Spider-Man. That's what Oh, I said. listen. Andrew Garfield has got Spider-Man has gone through a redemption arc for us. Uh, he is he is Better than well Toby respected. No, no, no. No, the, oh well, you know. The the most recent Spider-Man movie has has given Andrew Garfield the, the redemption arc he deserves. No, it's, so. it, there's no question, but I'm just saying I still would take Holland and and um and McGuire over him though. I would. Fair enough. Fair enough. I've just seen Andrew Garfield. Well, give me your do top three Spider Man. You don't get to, to skate on this one. If he has redemption, where does he fall on your list? Um, I mean, probably number two. I have okay. to say over over Toby, but I think it's only because the movies matured a little bit in a way that it's not Toby's fault. It's right. just the nature of how the superhero movies have evolved. Um, But I also have seen Andrew Garfield on stage several times, and he's such a a tremendous actor that it's hard to not give him those those kudos. But fair enough. um, Yeah. Anyway, uh, sort of getting back to the flyers here and and what has to happen. I think that, you know, we keep saying this is an important week. Well, the flyers have put themselves in a position to have these important weeks continuously. And I think that's a good thing. I think that based on, you know, what we've talked about in this episode in terms of how they're handling the younger guys, I think, you know, it's still a little bit to be desired there in terms of how they're sending messages to them. But I think that, you know, we should see them do a better job of that. And, you know, we'll see if they can do it. All right, that will do it for today's show. Thanks so much for making us your first listen every day. We will be back tomorrow to discuss this game against the St. Louis Blues, and we'll have our Phantoms Tuesday report. Uh, We will also be having a mailbag segment later in the week, so get those questions in. You can email us at LockdownFlyers at Gmail. Send us a message 
over on Twitter or comment on our YouTube channel. We're also taking requests for draft eligible prospects. Get those to us as well. I'm Rachel. I'm on Twitter at our Miriam. That's our M I R I A M. I'm Russ. I'm at Sportsology, S P O R T S O L O G Y. Have a great day, everyone. <laughs>